It's always a balance. Right. I find that most people don't balance. A lot of people don't even understand the detriment of what they're doing. Some of us are in the habit of work, 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 no rest. That's not sustainable. Some of us are in the habit of rest, 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 hardly any work, also not sustainable. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of Next Level University, where we teach you how to level up your life, your love, your health, and your wealth. What are you doing over there? <laughs> Just making sure that the shot is correct. Okay. We hope you enjoyed our latest episode, which was turning your passion into profit. Oh, yeah. Today, for episode number 605, I was saying epidode last, last time we were here, we are going to talk about balancing challenge versus comfort and how that crosses over into many, many different aspects of life. So if you listen to last week at last week's episodes, I cannot speak today. Alan was sick and his voice was jeffed. Yeah. Still kind of is. My bit. voice is a little jeffed today. So for the last probably four or five days, I have been feeling under the weather. And one thing I'll give myself credit for is when I do not feel well, I tend to take time for myself. <laughs> Milking it? Yeah, I, I tend to a little bit. <laughs> it's what I want to do most of the time. Now I have an excuse to do it. <laughs> but I realized that, so I didn't go to the gym. I slept in. I still got all my work, like, I still got the most important essential work done. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going above and beyond doing 150% days, but I was doing the stuff that I felt had to get done trying to respond to the messages that were important, but then giving myself the time and space to seek comfort in order to heal. Right. The problem is, well, there's a lot of different ways you can go with that. Would I have made more progress if I seeked out challenge during that time? Maybe. But here's the thing. Maybe not. Maybe because not. if you aren't prioritizing getting back to your optimal health... Mm. then you might be down and out for longer. Numbers. And this comes down to like a bunch of 80% days versus a couple 50 and then back to 100. Yeah. And it's just interesting, and I think the best analogy for this is always the gym. Are you going in the gym and... Oh, didn't did, turn the timer Didn't on. turn the timer on. What should I change it to? I would, I would put 19 to be safe. 19, to be safe. 19 minutes on the clock today. Just so everyone knows, our camera kicks off. Yeah, at the half hour mark, we have a Sony A7 III, and they're not. The cameras are not meant to be the way we use them. They're meant more for, for photography, but yeah, it is what it is. It is what it is. So, in the gym, are you having a comfortable workout or are you having a challenging workout? And we talk about this often, but I think the really important thing here is you want to stretch the rubber band, but you don't want it to snap. If you challenge yourself too much during your workout, you might get injured. You might, you know, hurt yourself. But if you don't challenge yourself enough, you won't get a good workout and you're not going to grow. You're not going to improve. And I think that all of life is that way. I think another beautiful way to tie this to something else is you and I, and if you're watching this or listening to this, and you're doing something different than a lot of people in your life, you have probably had people say like, why is that hard? Or not understand the, the journey or the challenges you're facing. Okay, so think of it this way. When you are not facing a ton of challenge, you're probably getting a little bit... So you're moving past... You're moving higher on the drive to five. You're probably not super humble because you don't have a lot of reasons to be. Yeah. Right? When you feel like you're crushing it and everything is going well and everything is easy, you tend to lose your humility. Yeah. That is the time to challenge yourself. Absolutely. To bring yourself back down to earth. When you're struggling and you know, you're know you going through a breakup and something else happens and something else happens and you're sick and whatever it is, some people, that's actually a good thing and it motivates them. But for you, maybe that's the time where you seek comfort. It's so important because, again, we live in this culture, particularly the genre we're in of self-improvement, where it's like grind, 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 no excuses, all of that stuff. But like that is that's not a long-term fix. Like, you have to understand yourself. You have to understand that maybe you operate better in a certain way versus the way Alan and I operate. And you have to understand where you're at. Yeah. So, if you're down and out, you might need more support and more comfort. If you're, everything's going really well, you do need more challenge. The, the thing is, is 
it comes down to, are you at the right amount of discomfort? And there's a million books about this, but one in particular that I, t- I read recently is called Peak Performance. And it talks about stress versus rest. And he uses the analogy of cyclists. So cyclists actually have hard days, and then they have non-hard days. The hard days are like brutal workouts that are insanely challenging. And these are some of the best cyclists in the world. And um, I don't know if you've ever done like a spin class or any of that. It's like brutal. Like cycling, I used to, uh, when I was a kid, I used to ride my bike all the way to the movie theater and back, which was like 25 miles there and back. So like 50 miles a day, 50 mile days. Which one, Bellingham? Yeah. Savage. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. And I was, you know, but it was also brutal because the hills. Do you, you remember... Um, driving to Bellingham, mm. down Menden, like that big hill. There's a huge hill. Like, no. uh, you know where the fire station is in Menden? Menden Fire Station. Okay, so you pass the airport video on your right, yeah, and then you take that right, yeah. that big hill, all the way down. There's a restaurant on your right, you keep staying right. Yeah? Yeah, that hill okay. is brutal on the way back. Mm. So we rode up down it. You know, we're hitting like 45 on our bikes, you know, when we were kids. Dangerous. Wear a helmet. But on the way back, just absolutely brutal. But anyways, so he talks about you stress versus rest. Let's say I did a 50-mile bike ride. I really probably should the next day take some time off my legs. Mm. As long as I'm going to eventually work out again, though. See, it's really hard to be a peak performer in anything. It's really hard to to succeed and this is why we are habit creatures some of us are in the habit of work 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 no rest that's not sustainable some of us are in the habit of rest 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 hardly any work also not sustainable Mm -hmm. it's very hard to dance between these two extremes it just is and you got to find the right balance for you and you got to understand when do i need to be a little more uncomfortable and then other times when do i need to be more comfortable because if you're injured you better not go back to the gym yet. You got to heal first. But if you're, you know, milking that, and weeks later when you're already healed, you're still not going to the gym. Like that's da- that's a dangerous game. Yeah, and I think you know, right? Right? Like, for me, it was okay. I wanted to go to the gym two days before I did. Right. Right. So I went to the gym on Monday. I wanted to go on Saturday. But it was like, yeah, I'll give it, I'll give it a couple more days just to be safe. Right. And even today, like it wasn't the greatest workout. It felt good to be back in the gym and, you know, hitting my system and doing. So we're recording this on Monday, so we're doing our meetup and all these episodes. So it's a heavy day, right? But it's like I feel like I've, and that's another thing. I planned For my this. comfort. Yeah. Like, okay, what is the most important day of the week? Monday. Monday, Monday is the most important day of the week for us. That's when we record most of our content. That's when we do the meetup. There are things that I cannot really miss. And you need to be at your best for. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's a whole other thing. What Epidode. Epidode. <laughs> what what is a something new that you understand about this that you didn't recently? I appreciate the question. I would say when it comes to being an effective coach, I didn't fully I did understand this, but I don't think I did a, as good a job of it as I wanted to. And so, whether it's challenge versus comfort, okay, so some people I believe need more challenge, and I think the large majority of people, in my opinion, aren't, aren't challenged enough. Um, but I do think there are some people who are overly challenged and who need to try to seek some comfort to, to really be at their best. Mm. Um, this is what I would say. So, so as a coach... If you're out there and you're a coach listening, you'll understand this. But if not, or maybe you aspire to be, um, it's one of the most fulfilling things in the world. But in some regards, you have, at least personally, I take on some responsibility for someone else's success and fulfillment. And at the end of the day, I know it's up to them to do the work. But I do believe wholeheartedly in my ability, uh, my ability to help them succeed. Mm-hmm. And because of that, It's also up to me to understand where they need to be challenged and where they need to really give themselves a break. And it's very difficult to help someone if you have the wrong diagnosis. 
how do you how do you give the patient the right medication if you don't understand the underlying cause of the disease? And so, for example, um, Emilia had a chemical burn uh, from her Apple Watch. Basically, tea tree oil had a uh, chemical reaction with her Apple Watch. Not her Apple Watch, but like the little um, band. case around it. Yeah, the band around it. And when she went to urgent care, they s- prescribed several different medications. And then also she's icing it and also putting it under cold water. And it's working really well. It's healing, which is awesome. But if you didn't understand the underlying cause of of the fact that inflammation is a bad thing and ice is going to help that, how would you give the right medications? Like prednisone suppresses the immune system and usually makes things like poison ivy or poison oak or, or this, I think, it, I forget the name of it, but this better. When you're coaching, that's what you're doing. You're, you're seeing the patient from a holistic perspective and you're trying to understand what are the root, what are the limiting beliefs? What are the behaviors that are no longer serving this person? What are the goals that they want to achieve versus the goals that they think they want to achieve? What, what is holding them back? What would get them to the next level? And then you have to, you have to challenge them to see things they don't want to see. You have to sometimes challenge them to seek more comfort. Mm. I had to do that with Emilia recently. Like, sweetheart, you're always rushing around. And I love that because you're so ambitious and you're, you're crushing it and you're achieving all these goals. And, you know, we just got a house together. I appreciate all that. But I also, I think that if you keep rushing around, there might be some downsides to that. And I just want to hold up that mirror for a minute. And with Emilia, I, the challenge is, help, is her taking self-care, her making sure she's seeking comfort at times. For most people, that's not the case. Most people, that's their default. And that's okay. I'm not, I'm not making most people, I'm not making that wrong. What I've learned is that you have to stay at five. Here's what I mean by at five. You have to stay centered. And everyone has a different center. Kevin knows this about me. I'll like, I'll like work, work, work really, really hard and I'll be, I'll be really on point. I'll do what's hard and necessary and I will do nothing that's fun and easy and I'll really get after it. I'll be super happy and super fulfilled, but I usually am not able to fully sustain that. Then all of a sudden I start kind of slipping. Some disciplines start to fall, you know, and I think we're all guilty of this on some level. And then all of a sudden I'll start going down that road. And then all of a sudden you'll see me like so frustrated with myself. of like, okay, it's time to get my shit together again. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the biggest issues for our listeners that we've seen is not everybody has people in their corner trying to lift them to the next level. And even the people who are trying to help don't always know how. That's why Kevin and I created Next Level Group Coaching. It's a three-month program on teams of 10 with all people committed to achieving their goals. Click the link in the show notes for more information. And we only take 10 people at a time, so make sure you get in quick. So I'll start letting myself off the hook and that'll be a habit. And then I'll, st- I'll overcorrect by like, okay, I'm not letting my, myself off the hook on anything. And then I'll go, and th- I think it's a dance. It's always a dance. So if you're out there listening right now, where are you at? If zero is just so comfort zone, just complete comfort zone, you're not challenged, you're just kind of hanging out, playing games on your phone, watching trash TV, blah, blah, blah. That's zero. 10 is all you do is work. All you do is what's hard and necessary. You never, ever take a moment. You're just grind, 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 challenge, challenge, challenge. You have no comfort, all challenge. Where are you at? Zero to five. Are you at your five? And remember, everyone's five is different because everyone can squat different weight. In this analogy, in order for... Okay, so Kevin and I both squat. Me at 225 might be at five whereas for kevin that's probably you know 350 no not anymore but not anymore but like you know what i mean it's like i can he can handle more weight in squatting than i can if kevin and i give a speech in front of a thousand people that might not put us to 10 yet if we do a stadium with sixty thousand, that might put us at 10 because we're not ready to squat that much weight yet if that makes sense and so if you're out there just remember that some people can handle more discomfort. It's it's a it's a they have more emotional, mental, and physical muscle, and spiritual muscle than you do. Vice versa, you got to understand where you're at, and you have to consistently level that up. I think it's important to make sure you're scheduling. Like, 
if you're somebody who seeks, if you're somebody who is more often than not finding comfort and you have to push yourself to work or push yourself to challenge, that's something you should schedule. Okay, from X to X, I work. Right. Whatever work is, right? Whatever that, whatever that means to you. Right. If you're on the other end, then you should say from six to nine every night, I R and R, and then I go to bed at nine. Yeah. Right? I know that's what you've been trying to do. Yeah. For me, it's the other thing of like, I need to work at least 12 hours a day. Like, that's what I should be doing. I know that. Right. And I'm naturally the comfort. I just am. I'm naturally, I, I seek comfort. I like hanging out. I just do. Right. I watched, oh my God, seven hours of UFC on Saturday. <laughs> like from 6 p.m. until... One in the morning, I was in front of the couch watching fights. It was amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. I loved it. The best fight card there's been in a while. But that fills my cup. That fills my cup. And that's something I was working towards the entire week. That's yeah. another thing. Is like I'm Okay, this Saturday. This is a great example. This Saturday, I'm hanging out with my buddy Matt. We're going to play Call of Duty, and we're going to eat pizza. Mm-hmm. But you better believe that throughout the week, yeah. I'm going to be understanding that, okay, that's happening on, on Saturday. Right. So these are the things that I want to make sure I get done before then. It's it's always a balance. Right. I find that most people don't balance. A lot of people don't even understand the detriment of what they're doing. Like I have I have a client who works 15, 16, 17 hours a day, but it's not the right stuff. I know. It's not know. always the right stuff. And it's like, but what... Okay, fine. Then consider going for a walk work and fit it in. Like that's important. That's right. important. That's filling your cup and that's making it sustainable. That's the one thing that I think sustainability. Sustainability. Is this sustainable? That's something I always say. Like, my sustainability bell is ringing. This isn't sustainable. What we're doing is not sustainable. Yeah. I'm always focused on that because I think inherently the Lori Harder, like 80% days are better than spotty 100s. They just are. Oh, for sure. They just are. Figure out what an 80% day is for but you. But how do you get consistent 81%? And well, then yeah. consistent eighty two percent. But I think, think there's a is there a point where you hit eighty nine and it's like that it, it where is the diminishing return? I know. Right? Like where is that? And it's different for everybody, obviously. I'm with Kevin so much on this. I would rather you consistently do a seventy percent day than have four one hundred percent days and three burn downs. Yeah. But I also think it's possible to get from okay, there's fifty two weeks in a year. You can get 70% week, and then you can get a 70.5% week, mm-hmm. and then you can get a 71% week, and then you can get a 72% week. Oh, shoot, now I crashed. Okay, so then I had a 65. Now it's like, oh, 73, right? And it, we have the data for this because we do peak performance tracking, and we have, at this point, like, I want to say, between my NLBS clients, Next Level Business Solutions, both group coachings, and the NLU team, I think we have 40, 40 people on peak performance tracking, I think 38, 39. Mm. And we have so much data. I have so much data. And you can see everyone's graph. Just so everyone's listening, you can I can see everyone's graph of their performance over time. It's always cyclical. It's never flat. Kevin's is lately because it's all 100%. But even then, the system changes and adapts. Um, and I could do more. Right. Like, that's the thing. I right. Could I challenge myself to do more? Absolutely. Right. And that's something, and I have. I've, I've shifted things. Right. And you've also changed the way you do things. Yeah. So, for example, Next Level Nation community engagement is one of your line items. You said recently, well, I need to have more meaningful responses. Mm-hmm. So it's not just, yeah, you might still be getting 100%, but you're doing more with it. More with it. Yeah. And so there's a lot of nuances to this. But just remember, life is cyclical. When you say you, cyclical... You will have high weeks and low weeks. You will have high days and low days. You'll have high years and low years. You'll have high months and low months. But the area under the curve will be bigger because you're, you're in two years from today, my least productive week will be better than my most productive week today. Why? Because I will be more capable. Mm. Because I will have grown. Right, so that's the frame, and that's a forever infinite game. Hopefully, I explained that well. Yeah, you did. Okay. What uh, area under the curve? What's that? Ah, uh, I was just gonna say average. As long as your average is getting better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, that works. Work. Yeah, area under the curve is your right cosigning and graphing calculators. <laughs> right back to algebra two. I'll just explain it super fast. Uh, area under the curve is the integral. The integral is a calculus term. So, uh, picture. 
picture a graph with a with a line going from you know zero to the upper right hand portion of the graph. The area under the curve is basically the amount of total output you've you've done. If the y axis is performance and the x axis is time, the area under the curve represents how much you've done over time. Mm -hmm. Like the, the total cumulative you've done over time, if that makes sense. Cool. And in peak performance tracking, that's what I'm really looking at because I want to maximize the contribution, but also my, my growth. So growth and contribution is what I'm trying to ma optimize for with us and the team and my clients and all that. That's what the area under the curve actually represents mathematically. It's important to understand where you're at. So you can hear Alan and I are very clear on the way that we're wired. And I think it's super important because that's going to determine the way that you work mm -hmm. and what inputs you change and where your home is and all that. Understand that about yourself. If you're the kind of person who struggles to sit down and hammer out the things that you need to get done, maybe that's something that you need to schedule. Look, right. my phone is not by my side from 9 till 4. That's just, I, my phone won't be, and I'm not saying that about me. You guys know if you message me on Instagram, I usually get back. But okay, if that's your struggle. Right. Right. Then do that. If your struggle is, look, I just would rather work all night. It is that sustainable. How sustainable is the system that you're running and what can you do to change that? I think it messes with me, Kev, because you're absolutely right. Like I would be better off if I actually set that boundary. I think so. Yeah, because it ends up biting you later. So like if I work till if I grind it out and work till midnight. I pay for that the next day. I think about that. So today is, we're recording this on Monday. I was going to go to the gym tonight. Yeah. And I literally thought, okay, if I go to the gym, I won't get home until 10, 10 30. Right. No going to the gym in the morning. Of course not. Will I go to the gym tomorrow night? Probably not because I'm at home all day. Like that, yeah. that will Jeff me in the it's week. a rolling, it's a rolling, I don't even know what to call it. It's like a, you have to look at the aggregate, the total. And I, when you said the scheduling thing, I think that's fire and we'll end with that. I naturally seek challenge. I've noticed this about myself. And as a matter of fact, I'll be transparent. I, I have an injury that keeps happening because I so seek challenge. The moment I start feeling better, I start hiking and climbing rocks and going to the gym. And it's like, dude, you need to stop. You stop. And I'm carrying everyone else's bags. Like I carry Amelia's bags all the time. And, and, and I, she insists I'm carrying her own. And I'm like, no, let me carry it. But I'm injured and I still want to do it because I like, so just understand that if you, there's two types of people and I, I, this is kind of a blanket statement, but are you the type of person who naturally seeks challenge? No matter what I do, Kev, I am always trying to push the envelope yeah, in everything. Sure. Always have been that way, genuinely. Not everyone's that way. Some people naturally seek comfort. That's okay. Figure out which one you are, work on the other one. Yeah. I have to work on seeking comfort. And other people might have to work on seeking challenge. That would I think you and I are a great fit because of that. I know. Because I would not have taken on many of the challenges that we have if it wasn't for you pushing me. So I think it's I think it's very important. And the reason I say that too is I want you guys and, and gals listening to understand that I'm not necessarily the same as Alan. Like, we've been learning this and digging in and leaning into this more of like, look, I don't like working as much as Alan does. I just don't. Right. I just know, or to my awareness, that's what's required of me to get the goals that I want. Right. I don't necessarily enjoy it. I enjoy this. I enjoy recording, being on other shows, that sort of thing. But I don't enjoy journaling. Like, that's not something I enjoy doing. I don't like meditating. Right. I just don't enjoy it. It just is what it is. It's something I have to do. <laughs> I'd rather watch UFC. I'd rather play PlayStation. I just would. Right. But I also understand that that gets old very quickly too. So right. It's important. Yeah. It's important. This is good. This was good. Figure out where you are. Figure out who you are. Figure out what you need more of and what you need less of. We're actually going to do an episode similar to that next Monday. Ladies and gentlemen, Alan and I have had, I don't know, probably close to 150 guests on the show at this point. Yeah. We understand how difficult it can be to get a guest. And even more than that, we understand how difficult it can be to get a guest that speaks directly to your audience. Mm -hmm. If you are looking to have guests on your podcast, Alan and I would be happy to come join your show. Uh, again, we're not those people who are like, oh, you only have 20 episodes, we're not going to do it. Uh, we, we want to add value. We want to master our craft. And if you're a listener of the show, we want to help you. 
Anything you create, send it over to us. We'll promote it. But at the end of the day, that is our our goal is to impact, inspire, motivate, educate. We want to, you know, impact a billion people, mm-hmm. like at least a billion people. That's a lot of people. Oh, yeah. So if you have a podcast and you want us to come on, just uh, DM myself or Alan, or uh, you can email us, Kevin at nextleveluniverse.com, Alan at nextleveluniverse.com. I've been saying this a lot lately. One DM can change your life. That's that's a true statement. It is a fact. Is. Uh, Tiff and Amy are proof of that because they both DM'd us originally, and it's blossomed into so many magnificent things. So one of the biggest problems that all of our clients and our team and us personally have dealt with is when you start a growth journey, you kind of have to say goodbye to some of the old persons, places, things, and ideas. So, for example, whether it's whether it's getting out of the environment where there's a lot of drinking because you want to quit drinking, or it's you want to start learning how to make more money, but the people you used to be around don't want to talk about money. Um, you're, there's a lot of discomfort going from the old world to the new one. And if you're out there, think of your favorite movie. The hero, the character in the movie, is in the old world and something tragic usually happens. And when something tragic happens, it catalyzes the need for a mentor or a guide. So Luke Skywalker's parents get killed, and then Obi-Wan Kenobi is there. Spoiler alert. Yeah, spoiler alert. And then he embarks into the new world of being a Jedi Knight. But that journey is so brutal. Luckily, he has Han Solo and other people around him to help him on that journey. That's what Next Level Nation will do. We've created a safe group, private Facebook group, where you can join, and it makes Lonely Land, a.k.a. the time between the old world and the new world, less lonely and that's why you got to join next level nation kevin and i are in there every single day every team member is in there every single day at least to some extent Uh, amy is the champion of that it is built to support you towards your goals we're not just here to teach you and to inspire and motivate you we're here to actually support you along the way and so if you go into the show notes there are three links the first one is for group coaching second one's the website third one is for the private facebook group join there check us out and uh we hope to see you in there it's the reason we love you is because we don't have fans we have family facts ladies and gentlemen we hope you enjoyed this we will talk to you on the next one i have to say it again because i don't know that i can not say it at the end we don't have fans we have family talk to you soon bye